So how long have you been doing this? That was pretty good. Yeah, you, you guys just graduated from music school or something? That's really darn good. Hey, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I guess. Hey, I'd like to invite or, or recognize you guys here. We have Colleen Jenkins with SAS. Please welcome her. Thank you. We have Celestaline and uh, from Microsoft Corporation, good friend of ours, and Thomas Molina with AT&T. And so we kind of, uh, you know, I have kind of the, the next subject up. I put down 21st century skills, but we have software and hardware kind of combination. And Celeste, I also want to thank you again for Microsoft because you have been sponsoring this show as well. Most so definitely. maybe we can show up next week again. <laughs> um, but I really appreciate it. You, have a, you have an exciting new program. Yeah, well, actually, first of all, I want to say thank you to Jemay and yeah. everybody here, and thank you to you for, yeah, for inviting us. Um, there's a couple of things I want to start with first. Go for it. Because Microsoft is so committed to um, education and technology training. And for the last 10 years, we've given over $209 million for cash, software, and curriculum. And I don't think a lot of people know that. Right. But more importantly, we feel that there's a couple of things that need to be done. First of all, Kids need technology skills. Without that, they cannot compete anywhere for any job. So that's number one. Number two, communication, communication, communication. I think I heard several times today from several different speakers that we are not communicating the way young people need us to communicate to them so they understand what it is they need to do. And number three, access. If we don't have the access, young people cannot do anything. They cannot have the ability to get into the workforce. So those are the three important things. And then speaking to what you were trying to say around Elevate America, yes. it's a new campaign. For years, we have given to the underserved communities. We've given lots of money to the communities. We've given them technology skills. But now we're opening that up to everyone. And how Fabulous. are we doing that? Through government state agencies. So we have free e-learning vouchers that we're giving out. And we hope to uh, train 2 million people. Two million people. Two million people with wow. those technology Wow, thank doctors. you. All right. Yeah. You know, it's amazing to me, and what you've described is certainly partnerships, right? Yes. This doesn't happen without partnerships. And Thomas, maybe you have some thoughts with AT&T. You have some great programs. How do partnerships play into the programs that AT&T has? Uh, AT&T does uh, a lot of partnerships. We partner with, of course, Cisco, with Apple. Uh, we partner with a, a slew of different companies to help express uh, the ability. Because as, as a rule, people think of ATT as just a transport company, uh, the one who's behind the background. But in, in essence, what we've done is we've expanded that uh, arena by partnering with different companies so that we can go ahead and improve education as a whole. And they've even have hired people, people who, who work for me directly, are from education and our teachers with 10 plus years of education backgrounds brought in so that they can have a better understanding of how to go ahead and assist education in, uh, in a more effective manner than it is doing today. Yeah, I just like what you said because I think it resonates. You know, educators have to ha have a wealth of information, right? And sometimes we disconnect ourselves and just because we have big names and we're kind of global, right, doesn't mean we, we're not people, right? Mm -hmm. We're sitting up here, we're talking and and we'd love to know, you know how these programs come together. And I think a lot of our programs are, are built in collaboration with teachers and educators. And Colleen, I know that SAS, by the way, SAS is the largest private corporation in the world. And that is really cool. I would love to own stock, but I can't. <laughs> no, are you going to go on the stock market very soon? No, we, now is we a good time. Question. You know, the stock would start very low. And mm -hmm. maybe when the economy recovers, we can make some money. <laughs> nah. I'll okay. let Dr. Goodnight know your opinion. <laughs> I know, I'm sure. And Dr. Goodnight spoke, spoke to the Milken Institute not yes, long ago, right? Uh, last week. He last did. week. Mm -hmm. And what were some of the subjects that, that he's uh, near and dear to his heart? Well, SAS has been passionate about education ever since its inception. For those who don't know our story, uh, Dr. Goodnight and his partners, um, way back when he was on the NC State campus, actually delivered and developed SAS software. Right. So our traditions have always been around supporting education because that's where we have come from. So our passion is around um, how we can work within our community and our country and around the world to deliver and keep in front of everyone this message about how important it is to keep uh, um, fueling uh, the um, ability to get into our classrooms, enabling technologies, as well as being sure that the engines for education, those systems, those operational pieces that run the education enterprise 
are enabled with the right kind of technology and software. And we do that a few ways, and the way we've come through, as you said, uh, Jamie, was through collaboration. Uh, the story around our curriculum uh, came from the notion that when the, Dr. Goodnight and his children were growing up um, and the Sauls were the other owner of our company, um, they couldn't find enough technology in our own schools in North Carolina. So they created a school in which they could infuse technology and curriculum and showed it uh, across the globe as a showcase of what that would look like.